Good afternoon. This is Dr. Lolita Cleveland from Youth Guidance. I'm a resource coordinator and I'm so glad to be reading with you guys today. I'll be reading Voice of Freedom, Fannie Lou Hamer. And you know, Fannie Lou Hamer is so important to me. So honored to read for you guys today. So let's get started and let's see what we are going to learn about the spirit of the civil rights movement. Sunflower County, Mississippi. Minister Malcolm X once called me the country's number one freedom fighting woman, but nothing about my beginnings would make you think anyone beyond these parts would ever hear my name. Mississippi, I was born here, the youngest of 20 children. My folks, James and Luella Townsend, were sharecroppers in Sunflower County in the Delta, where the soil was rich as black folks was poor, where cotton was king and Jim Crow the law. When I was born in October 6, 1917, the plantation owner paid my mother $50 for producing a future field hand. The money helped my family through the winter. Child, I am proof that the Delta birthed the blues. Fair, fair, wow, fair. School was open for months, December through March. When children were not needed to tend cotton, I liked school even if black history was left out and the textbooks made black seem like fools. I read poetry, I recited and won many spelling bees. May I have a definition free of bias, dishonest, and injustice? Fair, fair, fair. I gathered newspaper scraps along the roadsides and magazines from the plantation's trash just to have something, anything to read. I was hungry to learn. My mother drilled this into me. When you read, she said, you know and you can help yourself and others. In 1962, my friend Mary Tucker told me about a meeting at William Chapel Church. Four young men from out of town was pushing voter registration. Not a soul sitting in the pews had ever cast a ballot. Till then, I didn't even know that blacks could vote. When the people would get out of the fields, if they had a radio, they'd be too tired to play it. So we didn't know what was going on. In the rest of the state, even much less in other places. But my hand flew up when the men asked for volunteers to go to the county courthouse and register. It's all 18 of us signed up for the trip. I was just curious to go. So I did. I guess I'd have any sense. I'd have been a little scared. But what was the point of being scared? The only thing they could do to me was kill me. And it seemed like they'd been trying to do that a little bit at a time ever since I could remember. A old rented bus drove us 30 miles to Indianola what was the home of the Violent White Citizens Council. Barking dogs and rifle-toting men met our bus. That was supposed to scare us. The circuit clerk only let two people in the courthouse at a time. I went first. I didn't know what to expect. I had to give my name and workplace and then read, copy, and explain parts of the Mississippi Constitution. I didn't know nothing about the law. No wonder I flunked the test. Now at least I knew that voting was my right. SNCC? Hmm. Those young folks were something else. Most belonged to SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. That was called SNCC for its initials, 
The college kids saw me for a leader. I made it plain why I joined the movement. All my life, I have been sick and tired. Now I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I toured the South and words from my heart and spirituals I learned at my mother's knee. I fired up many a rallies. The little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. But I wasn't singing for show. I was singing for freedom. Leadership came natural to me as singing. People took to calling me the spirit of the civil right movement. America. Is this America the land of the free and the home of the brave? We stole the president's thunder and our support swelled like a storm cloud. Johnson was scared we could cost him Southern support and the nomination. He sent Hubert Humphrey, a pro-civil rights senator from Minnesota who wanted to be on the ticket as vice president. Johnson ordered Humphrey to, st to stop us. Humphrey went with me, Dr. King and our party's lawyer. The lawyer told us we should give in to get Humphrey elected. After I said that our cause was larger than one man. Washington. Back home, I ran for Congress again as a freedom Democrat, not to win the election, but to prove that the election needed to be thrown out and that the white congressmen should not be seated. Why? Because I had been barred from the regular Democratic ticket and the state had blocked so many Blacks from voting. Annie Devine, Victoria Adams, and I took that fight to Congress. We won more support than expected, but not as much as we needed. Annie, Victoria, and I was right there when the decision was read. We were the first Black women ever to sit in Congress on the House floor. Black power. Say it loud, I'm Black and I'm proud. James Brown. Black power had become the battle cry of the movement. For me, that meant pride and equal rights. Summer of 1968, I sat at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago as part of the Loyalist delegation, what was formed to crush the Freedom Democrats. Still, I let my voice be heard for aid to farmers and against the war in Vietnam. I was weary as an old soldier, but I couldn't rest. No, I couldn't. Not as long as Blacks was poor, schools were segregated, and Black teachers was demonstrated discriminated against. Not as long as laws be holding women back. One day, an old white man told me he appreciated me doing what he was afraid to do. Ain't no telling how long he wanted change. He could not be free until I was free. I always believed we serve God by serving our fellow man. And no child should know that hunger is. So I started a freedom farm, a pig bank, and a Head Start program. I helped folks living in shacks get hold of government housing loans. I made a lot of pots. I given my two cents to a lot. To the Women Liberations Movement, I won a lawsuit against Sunflower County to integrate the public schools and I lost a bid for state senate in 1971. The outcome was rigid against me, but 55 blacks was elected in Mississippi that year, a record for a Southern state. And in 1965, the Congressional Black Caucus made up the black Congress people, giving me a lifelong service award. 
Maybe I had won after all. Thanks for joining me in my journey about Voice of Freedom with Fannie Lou Hamer.